What do you expect out of this game tonight? Uh, I expect Chase Sugar to go out there and really just start with a good tempo, attack hitters, let his defense work for him, and I expect the offense to put up some runs. If they come out with the same intensity that they had in the TCU series, I'm ready for what's going to happen. All right, we'll see you after the game. Game day final. Enjoy the contest. Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Under the lights of Dish Falk Field for the second game of this Austin Regional, the Texas Southern Tigers look for their first ever win against the Longhorns. Number 13 national seed in this year's NCAA tournament. It could be set up for a rivalry rematch because in game number one, AM pitcher John Doxakis was nearly perfect. He struck out each of the first five batters he faced. He ended with a career high 12 Ks and only one hit allowed in six innings. In the third, the Aggies would get it going. Texas A&M would send 11 to the plate. They pushed seven across in the frame. Will Frizzell had a two-run double, a bases-clearing double from Zach Deloach. Went to straightaway center field, allowed the Aggies to get running. And that got him off to a big lead, 7-0 then, and it ends up a 10-3 final. So the Aggies are in the 1-0 game. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, awaiting the winner of this one. For their opponent, Indiana drops to the elimination game tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, against the loser of this one. And with that, welcome back. Tom Hart alongside Kyle Peterson. This is a Texas team that's been riding a roller coaster all season long, 9-9 nine and nine to start this year, and a very tough out-of-conference schedule. They finally got it going. They got it going in large part thanks to a superstar. They got an All-American at second base, and I'm not sure if they thought that Cody Clemens would be this good, good coming into the season, but the reality is he's been the best second baseman in the entire country. The Big 12 Player of the Year, Golden Spike semifinalist. Honestly, if you can earn it, Cody Clemens essentially has up to this point. Top 20 in the country in home runs, slugging percentage, and total bases. 19 home runs on the season for Clemens, and they've come at really big spots. He walked TCU off in a game that Texas had to have to make sure they could go on and win the Big 12 regular season. He's also fielded 984 at second base. I mean, Clements has really been the do-everything guy in the middle of this Texas lineup. One of the main reasons why Texas is hosting this week. They are undefeated against Texas Southern, a perfect 10-0. If they get to 11-0, it'll be a Longhorn Aggie rematch. First pitch is next. Texas Southern back in the postseason. They won the SWAC tournament. They had a great regular season in conference as well. Just six conference losses. They started 11 and 20. They didn't play a single non-conference Division I opponent at home. They are road tested and they've been slugging the ball all season. Number nine in the country in team batting average. Cameron Dukes is the SWAC player and hitter of the year. He's nearly hitting 400 and he's got 30 stolen bases. This is a team that loves to run and they'll put a lot of pressure on Texas catcher DJ Petrinsky. Michael Robinson in his 10th season as head coach. He does it all for him. Only full time coach on the Texas Southern roster. And he's used to the postseason. Nearly coached Prairie View to a big first round win against one of those great Rice teams a few years ago. They've been on the road in the postseason. AM two years ago, LSU last year. They should be used to this stage. Chase Sugar is as well, former closer. Now a starter, he's getting the call in this one because they think he can go at least twice this weekend. Here's a scouting report. Stuff's good. Fastball slider combo into the low 90s. I think tonight, especially against the Texas Southern team that really loves to run, control the pace and embrace the environment for Sugar. When he gets into trouble is when he puts guys on base. The stuff is plenty good to get out when it's in the zone. So here's Cameron Dukes in the leadoff spot. One of the best batting averages in all of college baseball. Senior from Pearland is hitting a cool 396. <laughs> 39 runs driven in. He's got 30 bags on the year. And he laces one into the seats. 117 stolen bases for Texas Southern. They will run early and often, and they're not really worried about who is on the bases. 
They'll run with just about everybody. Duke's 30 stolen bases. Luca 26 in the two hole. It's easy to run when you can get on base. It's 56 combined between Dukes and Luca. And Cameron Dukes is riding a 45 game reach base streak. Won't start here. He goes down swinging against Chase Sugar. You got to gear up for the Sugar fastball because he can run it up there. That one at 93 miles an hour. This is probably ball four. In fact, it's not probably ball four. It is ball four. But Duke's trying to get something don't going with the bat early. Can't lay off the high fastball. First hitter's a strikeout for Chase Sugar. Godencio Luca at the plate now for Texas Southern. Senior from Mountain View, California. He's hit safely in 15 in a row. Like this pace for Chase Sugar. Get it and go. Not wasting any time. Signs getting in quick. Back to back K's. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. First pitch fastball, second pitch break a ball, then Sugar just sticks a four seamer on the outside part of the plate. Great look from right behind home plate. DJ Petrinsky went and got it, probably brought it back over. Luca didn't necessarily like it, but two quick strikeouts for Sugar to start this one. Christian Sanchez now swings at the first, fly to right. Duke Ellis has it. That was a quick opening frame work by Chase Sugar. Former closer is acting like it. Just 11 pitches. Here's a look at the batting order put together by David Pierce, Big 12 Coach of the Year, who's reached the NCAA postseason in all seven seasons as a college head coach. Second year here at Texas. Three lefties at the top of the batting order, including David Hamilton, who's got great speed. So you got Hamilton, who's among Texas all-time leaders in stolen bases in the one hole, and Cody Clemens, who's among all-time home run leaders in the three spot. They get Peyton Schneider on the mound. Four and six with a 5-4-3 ERA. This is only the tenth start of the season for Schneider, junior from Harvard, Illinois. He's only thrown 68 innings this, uh, this season. He's thrown 10 wild pitches. He's hit 12 batters. Low three-quarters arm actually kind of slings it from that spot. I think the key tonight is you can't be too fine just because of the environment. Early outs are key tonight for Schneider. It's been tough for him to finish guys off. 41 strikeouts for Schneider in 68 innings this year. Early outs are important. 85 to start it off. Again, shortstop David Hamilton. Second team All Big 12 selection. He was a high school quarterback at San Marcos High School. Told you about his speed. He averaged more than 200 yards rushing a game as a quarterback. Hamilton is sophomore. This is still a young Texas team, but a lot of the sophomores got extended playing time last year. David Pierce's first season as the head coach. It's inside that time, two and two, maybe over through the fastball. And Snyder. From Harvard, Illinois, just about an hour north of Chicago, misses away to take the count full to Hamilton. The payoff. Ripped to the right side, but right at Valencia Luca. I have a feeling that the Tigers might have to make some defensive plays tonight. Behind Schneider? Yeah, when you look at Schneider's numbers, 86 hits allowed in 68 innings, just 41 strikeouts. It, it, it tells you that contact is probably going to happen. So for Texas Southern to really have a chance tonight, I think they're going to need a few outs like that. Sliced into left field. Now one hop eats up Ryan Diaz. And Duke Ellis is aboard. 
Base hit for Ellis. Luke Ellis turned in one heck of a season for Texas this year. Ends up going all Big 12. This one slices to left, and the break was okay by Diaz. I just think he thought that ball was going to carry a little bit further. Goes down to one knee. Shouldn't have lost it in anything this time of the night. Well, lucky he kept that one in front of him. That goes all the way to the wall. Ellis is absolutely standing on third base, and that might not, he might not have stopped there. So Cody Clemens, Big 12 leader in home runs with 19 of them. And the Big 12 player of the year steps to the plate. Out of Houston Memorial. The youngest of the sons of Roger and Debbie. Eighth in the Big 12 in batting average as well with a 341 mark. There's Roger. Cody's looking to improve on his postseason numbers for last year. He only went one for 19 in the Long Beach Regional for Texas. Longhorns won each of their first two games but couldn't finish it off. Popped him up. Diaz. Riding the wind over the shoulder, two down. It's not the most direct route out and left, but ultimately, Ryan Diaz gets to the right spot that he needs to. That ball traveled up further than I thought. The wind's starting to die down. What wind there is is still blowing out towards left center field, but Cody Clements obviously has shown the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. That one, he didn't even come close to getting, still almost carried all the way to the warning track in left center. One on, two out for Zach Zubia, one of a handful of Longhorns bothered by a virus this week. David Pierce wasn't sure that Zubia and some of the others would be able to play tonight. Snap throw to first. Ricky Urbano like it. showing off his arm. Texas Southern, who's without their regular catcher, Blake Hicks, ruled ineligible after playing in the SWAC tournament. Head coach Michael Robertson trying to move his fielders around. He's got a lot on his plate. He's the only full-time coach on the staff. Lost assistants in the offseason. Replaced him with graduate assistants and student managers. So he coaches third. He handles the fielding. He handles the pitching. He handles just about Defense. everything except yeah. for throwing VP. He's trying to move Diaz around. 3 0. Oh. You see a 3 0 green light right here. Double digit home runs for Zubia. The last Texas team that had two in the lineup with double digit home runs 2010. Cameron Rupp, Kevin Keyes, and Kevin Lusson. Here's a 3 0. Four pitch walk. And that'll bring Mason Hibbler to the plate. Even the outs for Schneider have been loud outs tonight. Hibbler's a junior college transfer. He absolutely blew up while at Odessa Junior College, coming out of Cypress Ranch High School. He had zero offers. Junior of high school, he was 5'7, 140. Now he is a stout 6 foot 190, if not heavier. Said he grew into his body and he grew into his baseball skills thanks to repetition. The junior college level, they play both fall and spring game schedules. The fouls went straight back. He's on that one. Yeah, that is the one thing. You go to the junior college level, there's just there's not as many rules when it comes to games played. And ultimately, probably get more reps. Hibbler able to grow at that level has been a big part of this Texas club. He went into his freshman year with only a couple of home runs in the last weekend. They're out of things. One of the assistant coaches said, I've got advice for you. Just try to hit the ball over the fence. 
He had four home runs that weekend. Ended up with 10 home runs his sophomore year. He said, I didn't know what it was like because I didn't have the body to hit home runs. That's coaching right there. Hey, kid, just uh, just hit it over the Hit it far. As far as you can. And he hits a laser that ends up in the glove of Tony LeBlanc. Three hard hit balls, but nothing to show for it. Longhorns strand a pair in the first. Let's take a look at the NCAA headlines. The Oxford Regional got rained out and laked out today. The dugouts got flooded. The bullpens were flooded. The outfield was a lake. They'll play games one and two tomorrow. Bruins scored four in the bottom of the ninth to knock off Gonzaga. One of their biggest wins from behind this season. And LSU has won 29 consecutive regional openers. Tigers have six national championships. They're playing in the Corvallis Regional. First pitch, ground out, Jose Camacho. And there's one down. This is the scene, Swayze Field today. New pool record set in the Swayze Natatorium. <laughs> Textbook butterfly right there. Yes. There you go. No truth to the rumor that Ben McDonald had his fishing pole with him. We get some one seeds in trouble tonight, too. Florida State down to Sanford, 6 1. Army up on NC State now, 5 1. Moorhead State leads Clemson early, 2 0. Base is empty and one out here. Elijah Day, Olarantim Elahin at the plate for Texas Southern. Five home runs in the season. He's driven in 31. At a Garland High School. Had a good swag tournament. Six for 17 at the plate. Can't find Sugar. It's fastball two and two. One of the regions David Pierce has decided to go with Chase Sugar today is that he thinks that he'll have the arm to bounce back and throw on Sunday or if it goes seven games on Monday. And he could either do that, he says, in a starting role or out of the bullpen. He has retired the first five tonight, and he has three strikeouts. Well, I think the other thing that David Pierce is hoping for is some early runs. If you get Texas Southern down five, six, seven, nothing early, Maybe you can pull Sugar after five innings. He's been really efficient so far. Keep that pitch count down. Gives you a better chance to bring it back later on in this tournament. And the first pitch fastball misses upstairs to Keanu Van Curen. Junior from Las Vegas. The Chase Sugar fastball has already hit mid-90s. Beautifully placed. And TC TSU has its first hit of the game on a two-out bunt. It's not an easy pitch to butt right there for Van Curen. In fact, I think at the end, he, he was kind of trying to get out of the way. It's a two-seam fastball that's going to run out on his hand. So he squares right now. The body starts to turn, and he just had the angle of that bat sent. One thing with this infield is it, it plays a lot slower than you're usually going to see a turf infield play. Placed perfectly. Nothing Ryan Reynolds can do. First hit of the ball game for Texas Southern. Trey LeBlanc. Fastball inside. At a Mesquite High School. First name Horace goes by Trey. He is the third. Ninety two upstairs. Chase Sugar was pitching in the Cape League this summer. His head coach there was longtime North Carolina head coach Mike Roberts. A couple of guys left. Noah Davis and Justin Hoover were in the starting rotation for his Cape League team. They left early. And he reached out to David Pierce and said, hey, man, I think I might start. If I start here, maybe you could use me as a starter. And Pierce's response was kind of like, yeah, it's the summer. Sure, see what you can do. And then he made the full transition to a starter once he got back to Texas. But really, they needed him to fill that role. There's one blemish for this Texas ball club this year. It's been the inconsistency of the starters. Runner goes. And it's a stolen base for Van Curen, his 11th and 14 tries. 118th stolen base for Texas Southern this season. We talked to Michael Robertson, Texas Southern head coach, yesterday. He essentially said, our guys have the green light. 
every once in a while I may hold them up but for the most part if they can get a jump I want them to go it's it's one reason where when Texas Southern's on the base pass it causes everybody to play faster in that Texas uniform because you know there's always a chance they're going to be off and running he doesn't necessarily identify him by green light yellow light red light but they've got movers gamers ballers and shakers is it the movers are the guys who get the motor going for the whole team that would be like Dukes and Luca maybe Van Curen would fit that mode and the shakers are the guys that have the big bats who are the last guys shakers movers gamers ballers shakers movers, gamers ballers I don't know what would you be I, I think there'd have been a fifth I don't think I fit any of those full count to LeBlanc to short here's David Hamilton Texas the best fielding team in the Big 12 this season and sugar reaches and works his way around a hit Under the lights at Dish Falk Field here in Austin. Game two of the Austin Super Regional. Great crowd on hand. First host for Texas since 2011. For the last 10 seasons, one of the lowest RPIs to host. AM is the three seed, and they actually have the best RPI of the bunch here. Aggies with a commanding 10 to 3 win over Indiana in game number one. Here's Ryan Reynolds, sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana. Had a great fall, led the team. And just about all offensive categories in the fall. The only concern, David Pierce, is if his glove would be there. Mm. Goes down swinging. That was nasty from Schneider, his first K. That's a real sinker there. 85 miles an hour. Get extension from that low three quarters arm slot. You're not expecting from that arm slot, you're expecting that ball to go side to side a little bit more, not straight down. And, and that one had movement that was almost like a 12 to 6 breaking ball at the end. It was short, it was really going down when it got to home plate. Longhorn catcher DJ Petrinsky now. Junior from Magnolia, Texas. At a West High School, then Hill Junior College. Originally committed to Alabama. And Texas had a need. He put up incredible numbers in junior college. Longhorns are glad he's here. Because he uh, he's turned into a very good defensive and offensive catcher. Six home runs for Petrinsky over the course of the season. That's nasty. Two and two. Ball comes out of Peyton Schneider's hand like a wiffle ball at times. When it's right, it's pretty good. And a two seamer had. Good top to bottom sink. When he got over the top of the slider, it was good top to bottom. The key is staying out of the middle of the zone, as we saw in the first inning. When it's there, Texas was putting really good swings on it. If he can expand the zone, like he did to get the strikeout for Reynolds, now he's got a chance to be out there for a little bit. Can't do much of this, though. The walk to Petrinsky doesn't help. So watch the arm slide as it comes all the way through. It's low three quarters. And from that slot, again, you're expecting that fastball to move more side to side, not as much top to bottom. And when he gets over the top of that two seamer, it goes straight down. This is center fielder Tate Shaw.
Bottom of the fifth in Tallahassee. Samford leads Florida State six to one. Shaw 239 on the season, but the numbers jump against righties. 285. Mark Buchanan, home plate umpire, gave that one inside, one and one. Shaw, fourth year junior out of Austin Westlake. Did not have a hit in the Big 12 tournament. It was two in barbecue for the Longhorns in Oklahoma City. I think it was a strength of the league. At the end of the day, the Big 12 had the number two RPI of any league in the country behind only the SEC. It allowed Texas to get this host site. They won the league, and even though it went 0-2 in the conference tournament, that regular season was enough to play at home. See if you get action here. Petrinsky, not a great runner. Shaw handles the bat pretty well, 2-1. and one. You think you're going to get something to hit? Shaded up the middle trail of block. The shortstop is almost directly behind second base. Into left center. Duke's over to get it. Petrinsky will be stopped at third. And Texas has runners at the corners with one out in the second. Hit and run was on. So DJ Petrinsky at first base goes on the pitch, peeks in right there. And the minute it comes off the bat, when it gets over, Trey LeBlanc, the shortstop's head. Petrinsky's going to go first to third real easily. Good, simple approach by Shaw. You're facing a two-seam guy. It's going to move away from me a little bit. Stayed on it. Served it to left center. Horns in business here in a second. Two-way player Jake McKenzie at the plate now. Super senior from Dallas. Throw it away. Petrinsky will jog home. And the Longhorns strike first on a throwing error by Peyton Schneider. Looked like Peyton Schneider might have caught a spike a little bit earlier than he thought. Goes all the way back, and you can see that spike kind of catches on the top of the mound. And when it happens, he just airmails it right there, and you can see he lets up. I think at that point, he's just trying to flip it over, knows he has no chance to pick the base runner off. Shaw was going to be back easily, but the middle the minute that it gets past Kristen Sanchez, the first baseman, Petrinsky scores easily, and the horn strike first. Kinsey in the nine hole now with one runner in scoring position. Kinsey won the student athlete award. Graduated last month with a 395 GPA, petroleum engineering major. Had a game earlier this season where he played all nine positions. And he laces this one through the left side. It was some loud outs in the first inning. A couple line outs and a fly ball deep to left center. Texas now centering them up and putting it in a spot that Texas Southern just doesn't have anybody playing. The one out walk to Petrinsky got things started. Now back to back singles by Tate Shaw and Jake McKenzie. Peyton Schneider will get paid a visit here. Charles Guillory is the Texas Southern pitching coach. What can the message be here? Well, I think he's been around the zone, as you mentioned. He's gotten solid contact made off of him. And, and that, that seems to be the way that it goes a lot for Peyton Schneider. I, I think some of it is, is, is you can't get too fine now. This is when you can't start trying to miss bats right away. And with that fastball that really sinks, started at the bottom part of the plate, even though Hamilton's a plus runner, see if you can get two outs in one pitch.
Texas Southern has turned only 34 double plays this season. To put that in perspective, Texas has turned 63 of them. Squared to bunt. Could have been a safety, could have been Hamilton doing it on his own. He absolutely has that game. He can put it down and is the fastest runner on this Texas squad. First to Texas with 27 stolen bases since Drew Stubbs at 28 and 04. Dragged down the right side. That's going to get a run home and safe at first is David Hamilton. He can run now. He can really run. And speed never slumps. And when Hamilton takes it with him like that, he's already quicker out of the box. You know, right there, if you're Snyder, you got no chance of the guy at home plate. Shortened up when he got to first base, and the speed of Hamilton is enough. That'll go as an infield single and an RBI. And Texas now with two runs and still in business with the middle of the order coming up. This is Duke Ellis. And again, Hamilton flying down the base path. See him peak? He peaked when he was about 25, 30 feet from first base. Just wanted to see how much a chance he had. Then there was a little bit of an extra gear to finish that off. Ellis, foul. Duke Ellis, first team all Big 12 outfielder. 358 against righties, just 215 against lefties coming in. Did he go? No, says Heath Jones. Ellis single to left his first time up. Duke was a 20th round pick of the Mariners coming out of Panola College. Here's the 2 2. Change speeds on him. Second strikeout for Peyton Schneider. Two down, and here's Cody Clemens. Nineteen home runs on the season for Clemens. Drive handled there by LeBlanc to the right side of the infield. And the Longhorns push two across, but the leave one on. Paige Snyder dodging bullets in the second, including that one. Welcome back, Dish Falk Field in Austin, Texas, where the Longhorns lead Texas Southern 2 0. Game number two of the Austin Regional. Texas AM won game one in convincing fashion against Indiana. Ricky Urbano, the catcher, leads off for Texas Southern here in the third.
Bono from Spring, Texas, by way of Blackhawk College. The Texas Southern team that played a whale of a non conference schedule in Urbano against the Big 12 and SEC was 3 for 21. Mm. Mm. Oh, it looked like a miss right down the middle. Maybe up, if anything. To short David Hamilton. Do you like Chase Sugar's pace? Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed it right away. And for a guy that used to work at the back end of the bullpen, now he's looking pretty comfortable in the starter's role. Chase Sugar talked about how excited he was to get the call game one of this regional. And I think the only worry that you would have is just if the emotions get too much because of the environment. That hasn't been the case. He's worked quick. He's thrown strikes and again when he gets into trouble it's usually because he creates it himself. Almost one time through the order Sugar hasn't walked anybody. In terms of creating the issues himself one of the things that Chase said was difficult for him transitioning to a starters role was having the focus and the energy early in games he said. I talked to him yesterday. He said, I don't imagine that's going to be a problem under the lights tonight. The point being, when he's a closer, the adrenaline is there, and he relishes the big moment coming in games with the game on the line. He was having a hard time replicating that as a starter this season. Chase from Bridge City, Texas at a Bridge City High School. Through a complete game against TCU in his last start. Six hits and two runs to take his record as that one's handled in foul territory. To nine and eight career wise. Two down. First time through the order, eight and nine first pitch strikes for Chase Sugar. So he's been efficient and he's filled up the zone early. Into right, Duke Ellis drifts back. Fourth straight retired now by Sugar. We head to the bottom of the third. Due up for Texas, 10 home run man Zach Zubia. Welcome. To You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Tom Hart alongside Kyle Peterson, our fantastic LHN crew here tonight from Dish Falk Field. Longhorns lead two zip in the bottom of the third. And a win here tonight for Texas would set the stage for Texas. Texas A&M showdown tomorrow night on the winner's side. Zach Zubia punches it through the left side. He's aboard to start the third inning. First leadoff batter to reach for Texas tonight. North Carolina State in trouble in the Raleigh Regional. Army trying to finish him off. Army's got a 5 1 lead in the ninth. Casey Myers waiting in the wings for Auburn. Tanner Burns, a freshman, through today and through great. Here's Mason Hibbler. Early in the season, David Pierce was raving about Hibbler's ability to get deep into accounts. 
That's when Hibbler was in the two hole. Well, then they realized that Hibbler had a little bit more pop than they originally thought. They moved him down to the five spot. Talk with Mason about it yesterday. He said, when I was in the two hole, I always had a job to do. And I was good at doing that, but I always had a job and a responsibility. In the five hole, I could just swing. And you can tell he can handle the bat a little bit, no matter where he is in the order. Yeah, but let's see if David Pierce, Sean Allen take the bunt off right here. 2 0, you got to expect a fastball. Christian Sanchez, the first baseman, was charging there, held the base runner on, and then vacated the base right before the pitch was thrown. Sean Allen, the third base coach. Augie Garrido's number 16, the decal on the front of Sean Allen's helmet. Three and one now. Talking with Cody Clemens yesterday about how Texas turned this season around after a nine and nine start. He said, well, Coach Pierce insisted that we just had to do the little things, take each at bat one at a time. Each inning one at a time, just win the innings and move on from there. And as he was talking about it, and we've got a balk. It's gonna put Zuby at second. I thought he stepped off here. I'm with you. I thought he stepped off before he went to make the, the move at first. If you just jump turn and do that, it's a balk every time. But watch the right foot. That's the key. Does it step off the back side of the rubber before he does anything? I thought it did from here. It's like in the middle. I mean, they're they're, they're going to bring him back. Got to make sure that you step off the backside and don't initiate it by a jump right there because that, I, I think that could have been called either way. They're, they're going to send the base runner Zuby back to first base. In the end, I think it's a right call, but it's a little bit closer than you would like it to be if you're going to do that. You step off very deliberately and turn to first base. Never have to throw it. That, one, that was close. And we're able to slow it down and look at it that way. They're making the call live on the field. That was out, by the way, Brad. Three and one to Hibbler. Overcooked that one, and Texas has two on with nobody out. Third walk from Peyton Schneider. More coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets go online to NCAA.com. Michael Robertson has been the head coach at TSU since June of 08. Prior to that at Prairie View. The NCAA tournament with Prairie View in 2006. Nearly beat Rice on a Friday night at Reckling Park. In a one versus four matchup. Aggies await the winner of this one tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Indiana waits in the elimination game. This regional was sold out almost immediately after it was announced and tickets went on sale and you can bet that as many can fit in this place and get to spots around it to see it. If it's Texas and Texas A&M tomorrow night it will be loud. Ryan Reynolds will square early.
NC State trying to rally. They got one on in the bottom of the ninth, down five to one to Army. Moorhead State leads Clemson two nothing in the third. Slice foul. Well, speaking of upsets, this is a Texas Southern team that back in the day got a win against the defending national champs. You go back to 2004. At that time, Michael Robertson was at Prairie View. The Texas Southern went into Reckling Park and knocked off Rice on a Friday night. It's the only regional win in TSU history. David Pierce remembers that night well. He was one of Wayne Graham's assistants. And he has spoken openly about that game numerous times throughout the week once the brackets were announced. Reynolds Square to one. Watch the bat path. Watch the bat path. It's really flat, and then right at the last minute, it goes all the way down. If the barrel of your bat is below your hands, you're trying to bunt the baseball. That that's not a good place to be. You got to go down with your lower half. Got to go down with your legs. Keep that angle to where the barrel's above your hands to have any chance. The breaking ball right there. Reynolds just spun that barrel down. Still had the bunt on with two strikes. I don't I don't like it here. I'm okay with it earlier trying to push two more guys up in the scoring position but right here against a guy in Schneider that isn't really swing and miss stuff Reynolds not able to get it down before I, I think you free him up right here. And I think the question always is who are you setting it up for you got DJ Petrinsky on deck and he's only driven in 22. Petrinsky has been struggling with runners in scoring position, especially over the last couple of weeks. Just one for his last 17 in that stat. Strike three call. Third strikeout for Peyton Schneider. Here's DJ Petrinsky. Drew a walk and scored first time up. Why? to deep left field this one will leave the yard in a hurry three run shot for Petrinsky Jack is seventh of the year. Two and zero to Tate Shaw in the eight hole for Texas. Off the hands. That was a no doubter. 
Breaking ball that just hung right at the upper part of the zone, and Petrinsky hammered it to left. So after the strikeout, DJ Petrinsky doesn't waste any time. You can see the glove. Ricky Urbano, the catcher, was trying to have that one down on the on the outside corner of the plate, and it just hung right down the middle. Petrinsky made him pay. Now, Kate Shaw works a 3-1 walk. Only the third home run allowed by Schneider this year. I didn't exactly sneak out. You can move the walls anywhere. That still would have been gone. Runner goes. Pitch was in the dirt. Should be batter interference. It will be. And the batter is out. Jake McKenzie fell across home plate, impeded Ricky Urbano's throw. They will return Tate Shaw to first. That'll be the second out of the inning. It goes two unassisted. Yeah, this is going to get an argument, and immediately got it from Sean Allen. Now David Pierce out right now. I think I think the question, which is right in this, is pitch location and the natural movement of the swing right here. It's a hit and run. Jake McKenzie's trying to protect Tate Shaw. So even if you don't make contact here, he's trying to swing keeper Bono back long enough so he can't make the throw. David Pierce's argument is it's a slider down and away. What do you want him to do? You're going to go after the pitch, and on that, when your natural move, if you're going after, it's going to take you a little bit out of her home plate. I think it's a legitimate argument. Slider down and away. Well, it doesn't matter where the pitch is. You can't end up in the opposite batter's box when a catcher is trying to throw to second. I understand your point. Okay, but it watch, is natural, but, watch but it doesn't do have to be this impedes, Do you think this impedes it? Absolutely. If you, I, if was, I don't. I really don't. He came all the way over the plate. Now, remember, it doesn't have to be intentional. No, so I, what you're, I, you're right. Of chasing the no, pitch. You, you make a, it. It does not have to be intentional. You're right. You're right. I, and you uh, also don't have to make contact. No, you people. don't. And he didn't make contact. All I know is this. If, if you're the third base coach and you're the head coach, that one gets you fired up. Sure. Understood. It's um, understandable to make the call. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a no-brainer for sure. However, we have seen plenty batter interference calls where a batter is on home plate. He went all the way across I, dude, home I, plate. I, I disagree. He's far enough in front of him, and he goes down right away to get out of him. It, it, the, the move there was not to try to get in front of him. And, and I understand your point to where it doesn't have to be intentional. That's key. I disagree with the call. The rule reads as such, the batter intentionally or unintentionally interferes with the catcher's fielding or throwing by stepping out of the batter's box or making any other movement that hinders a defensive player's action at home plate. And the key being out of the batter's box. Under the glove of the block, his 14th error of the season. Which he was clearly out of the box. He was clearly out of the box. This is where speed can get you. And you force the other side to play a lot faster. We talk about Texas Southern when they get on the base pass, and it forces a defense to play a little bit quicker. David Hamilton does that when he's standing at home play. Trey LeBlanc's a shortstop, and he knows who's running. They've already seen Hamilton get down the line once in this ball game. That time tried to speed up a play, and the ball just zipped right under his glove. So Duke Ellis now. Ellis is one for two of the strikeout. Talk about the speed of Hamilton. This is on the bunt earlier. The time is in the upper left hand corner. Folks, that is flying. 3-5-5 down to first base is big league elite caliber speed. Major leaguers, from a scouting standpoint, great on a 20 to 80 scale. 80 is as good as you'll see as the major league level. That's an 80 runner right there.
2 1 pitch ripped down the right side that is fouled by a foot and a half. Peyton Schneider has thrown 25 pitches this inning. Campbell and Georgia rained out tonight in Athens. They'll try to play that one tomorrow. Fouled the opposite way. Souvenir. Boy, lefty. Rocking the Little League shirt tonight. Oh, yeah. Hug that one tight and then go show it off to your boys from South Austin Little League. Lined up the middle. Tate Shaw will be waved home. The throws cut off in the middle of the diamond. And Duke Ellis has his first ribby of the night. Two hit night for Duke Ellis and he will wear you out from left to left center this time shoots one right back up the middle first hit of the day was the left this time back up the middle and that'll be it for Peyton Schneider. TSU head coach Michael Robertson will make the call to the bullpen with Texas on top six to nothing. Tigers will turn it over to Mason Furlong. For a farm. Welcome back to Omaha. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do this. That one is oh, a grand slam. And it's cool. Oh, no way. That's filthy. The Capone with it. Boom! And they dogpile at the mound. Legendary. College World Series starts June 16th. Texas has dogpiled six times. They did it back to back in 1949 of 50. The first of some powers that put together consecutive national championship series uh, seasons. And the only question is, can Florida do it? They were number one of the bullet all season. They stumbled late in the year and lost six of their previous seven going into today. And they came from behind to knock off Columbia. Chase Sugar, the Texas starting pitcher, is getting loose down the right field line trying to stay warm. It's a good problem to have. Sugar's been great so far. Three innings, giving up just one hit. Mason Furlong making his 16th appearance of the season, a gaudy ERA. And they go left on left to Clemens. Talking with Cody Clemens yesterday. He said, you know, the one pitch I never see, I don't see left on left changeups very often. If ever. It's interesting. Because not too many guys will throw them. We talk about this a fair amount. You don't see right on right changeups as much. You don't see left on left changeups as much. I think it's a mistake. Well, the one exception, if you're good and you got it, was Bubich at Sanford who threw a lot of them. Absolutely. But for most guys, they're afraid to throw it because that movement's going to bring it back into the barrel. The reality is that comment is is meaningful because you can get you can get guys out. They're just not used to seeing it. Movement there and from the knees, throw to third, and everybody's safe in a double steal. Hamilton's 29th of the season, and Ellis behind it picks up his 14th. Yeah, you uh, you can't have it set up any better right here, and for Hamilton. With Texas Southern playing Trey LeBlanc behind second base. Nobody's really holding him on. Hamilton out of the corner of his eye can see exactly where the shortstop is. So a lot of them get more of a walking lead. Duke Ellis able to play follow the leader right there. Clemens only hit one home run against lefties last year. Seven this season. Ran it in on him. Stays one and two. TSU starter Pate Schneider two and two thirds. Seven hits, four walks, six runs thus far. Breakout season for the Big 12 Player of the Year, Cody Clemens. Oh. 
And he goes down swinging with two on, but the Longhorns send nine to the plate in the third. They chase Peyton Schneider. They score four in the third. DJ Petrinsky got the party started with a three run home run. Six zip horns. ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, Longhorn Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage is also available through ESPN3. Oh, Ooh, my. hello. I got to finish reading this. And the bases loaded channel, all coverage on the ESPN app, including. <laughs> no, that's okay. Luca getting hit by a pitch. Aye, aye. It was a long half inning for Chase Sugar. First pitch fastball, and there is nowhere to go. Did that get a ear flap? Got him somewhere. In you the got dog. more guys wearing the C flap right now. I think it got him in the back right there, and, and maybe caught a piece of the helmet to go straight up. You can see that C flap that Luca's wearing right there. That comes all the way across the cheek. Bunch more guys at the big league level wearing it, and we're seeing more guys at the college level wear it too. I like it because it doesn't impede sight at all. Gives you a little bit more coverage on the front side. Been a wild ride for Chase Sugar. Done a little bit of everything in his Texas career. And while pitching for the Katuit Ketleers in the Cape Cod League, he decided to take a stab at starting, and he carried that over into this season. He said there are two people he really leaned on. Of course, his coaching staff, but also his uncle, Ronnie Sugar, was a pitcher at junior college in Tyler, Texas. And when he was talking with his uncle about it and some of the frustrations that he had moving into the rotation, his uncle and his coaching staff were giving him the same advice. He said, I thought that was a really great sign because those two parties don't really interact and when he said just be you and do what you do as a closer and my coaching staff was saying the same things I had great trust three six wow. three double play play the game Jake McKenzie this is why it's so important when you're holding guys on on first base to, to take a real almost a secondary lead like a, a base runner does watch McKenzie come off so it's two hops and that allows him to feel the ball in the middle of his body. Then there's plenty of time to make the throw. Watch Hamilton come across the bag, too. So we're going to get out almost to the cut of what would be the grass. Fields it, creates a little bit more space when he goes to the infield side to make the throw, and then plenty of time to get back. That's as good as you can play it at first base. Fourth in the country in double plays. Now is 64. Lead the Big 12 in fielding percentage and errors. This is Jose Camacho. Camacho 6 4 2 15 fifth year senior from Oswego Illinois came to Texas Southern from Wabansi Community College and he sends a towering shot to left Hibbler is there that is an eight pitch inning for Chase Sugar he's cruising so is Texas when we return we'll talk with TSU head coach Michael Robertson. You head coach Michael Robertson with us now coach you guys didn't play a single non-conference home game against a division one opponent how did all those road games get you prepared for this Austin regional um, I thought it did a lot for us uh, definitely we battle tested uh, this ball club has been through more adverse conditions than probably any other ball club in the nation uh, hey we make no excuses we just you know have to do the best we can what we uh, have to work with and our guys really have done a tremendous job this year Michael facing Chase Sugar tonight. He's been pretty solid so far for Texas. From your standpoint, what do your hitters need to do to spin this right now? Well, just really to take a deep breath and stay in the present moment, you know, and just be who we are, you know. We somebody have to get us going. Uh, we more of a team that kind of, you know, uh, 
feed off of Cameron Duke. So yeah. uh, I thought that was big in the first inning that we didn't get him on base. And uh, we just got to stay, you know, uh, keep some positive energy and stay motivated and try to get going here. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Head coach Michael Robertson of Texas Southern. We're talking about the non-conference scheduling for Texas Southern. There's a similarity to be drawn between what they're doing in the baseball field and what they're doing with basketball. Mike Davis is a head basketball coach at TSU. Remember Mike took yeah, Indiana, Indiana to the national championship game. Texas Southern this year opened their season with a 13 game road trip. They went Gonzaga Washington State Oregon Baylor Wyoming Syracuse TCU Clemson Kansas Ohio State and on and on and on. They started the season 0 and 13. Yet at that time. Patrick Ewing's Georgetown team was undefeated and Texas Southern had a better RPI than Georgetown. And what they do on the basketball side in many ways is financially driven but it's the same effect on the baseball side because they know they're not getting into the NCAA tournament unless they win the SWAC tournament. Whether it's basketball baseball or or anything like that First 16 this year for the baseball side on the road play Missouri State twice. At Houston in the midweek at Kansas for three. At Southern then at OU ended up playing a single game at Mississippi State. Single game at Baylor faced this Texas club at Tulane. I mean that's you're playing some ball clubs there. He said the idea behind the scheduling is to get his team exposure to get them to face great talented teams and they be prepared for the postseason. The only two non conference home games came against Huston Tillotson and that's uh, not even division one. Their ballpark seats about 200. Cameron Dukes was talking about that yesterday with the media here at their media availability. So this will be a different stage for him. Played in the regional last year at LSU, the year before at Texas A&M. It's a good thing. I mean, these these are the environments you want to be in as a player. Mason Furlong misses low, two and two. Cameron Dukes, a swag player of the year, the swag hitter of the year. Michael Robertson just said when their offense goes, Dukes is usually in the middle of it. Dukes 0 for 2 today. Quick inning right there for Mason Furlong. It's a 1 2 3 fourth, but still all horns. 6 0 Texas, 4 complete on a great night at Austin. Game number two of the Austin Regional. Texas A&M won game one. Chase Sugart has only allowed one hit through four innings. Six nothing Longhorns top of the fifth. O.J. Ola run Timilahin will come to the plate now for Texas Southern. He's 0 for one of the strikeout. Southern Miss leads Dallas Baptist 8 0 as they go to the eighth thing at Fayetteville, setting up a Southern Miss Arkansas matchup tomorrow. A lot of home teams have finally made the adjustment where they're putting the host team in the first game of the day in the regional yep. to avoid any weather issues. May not be as good for the crowds, but it's smart for the home team. And as the host, you have that right. Well, it can give you a huge advantage. Look at Athens today. You get the first game in, but you don't get the second game in. You're going to have to play a doubleheader the next day. 
that and playing the four seed to open I think are the two biggest advantages that any home one seed has in this tournament. Weather this weekend will be hot in Austin. It was almost spike melting hot over in Lubbock today. Hot shot, smothering stop. Clements from his knees threw it wide and threw it away. All around Timolahan will reach to start the fifth. Well done right here because this is a seed one hopper to Cody Clemens goes backhand side has plenty of time just sped it up a little bit from the knees. Full run Timla Hen can get down the baseline a little bit force Cody Clemens to go a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Horace LeBlanc the third known as Trey 0 for 1. Well, around Tim Lahan has 10 stolen bases and 13 tries. Pardon me, Keanu Van Curen at the plate now. He's one for two. <laughs> TSU with two hits tonight. Neither one of them has left the infield. And Keanu Van Curen punched out. Fourth K for Sugar. Good idea, DJ. Petrinsky moves all the way on the outside part of the play, kind of splits that outside black. Like, I, I like a catcher to do that in an 0 2 count. You don't have to move all the way off the plate. Split the outside black. If you miss a little bit off, that's just fine. Good time Sugar gets the called strike for his fourth strikeout of the day. All the Sugar strikeouts today are on fastballs. Runner goes, strike, and a strike. Patrinsky put it on the money. Coming into this one, DJ Patrinsky, it's run out 23 of 54. Base dealers over the course of the year, and he got a good one to throw right here. Fastball on the outside part, so it's much easier to make that transfer already on the glove side. All Cody Clements has to do is wait for the base runner to slide right into that glove. And a breaking ball in for a strike now. I was thinking about this earlier. So uh, Petrinsky's thrown out 43% on this season. And he knows the Texas Southern is going to try and run. And for a catcher who has great pride, well, no chance to run anymore. Punch out back to back K's to go with the caught stealing. Middle of the fifth in Austin, 6 0 Texas. We'll speak with the head horn, David Pierce, after this. Corona. David Pierce joins us on headset coach chance for a home regional. What does it mean to be able to host? Uh, I just I mean look around. This is unbelievable to watch uh, our fans get into it like this and uh, just a, it's a great atmosphere but our kids earned it and uh, we're just happy to be playing in Austin Texas. David we were talking about this in the break. This is as efficient as I've seen Chase Sugar either out of the bullpen or in a starting role from your standpoint what's made him that good so far today. Well he's really attacked with his fastball and then as he's got some swing and misses he's been able to uh, really hit with the slider now he's building more and more confidence with his breaking ball. One more for you real quick right. given the score and, and if you add on right here does it change the approach for sugar moving forward knowing this thing could go three or four days. I just hate to think that this early I mean we just got to keep tacking on and see what happens from there. Coach thanks for your time Thank we appreciate you. it. Okay. Uh, I think he answered that question in the affirmative because if Texas can get up say 10 nothing and you could hold on to that arm for Sunday which was the plan. Either yeah. to bring him out of the bullpen or use him in a different way, maybe right. even Monday night in a game seven, it, you've got to consider it, right? I mean, that's why he's in this role to begin with. Yeah, I think more realistically, it's it's Monday. And and you figure out, can you bring him in for three outs, six outs if you absolutely need him? I don't think you're quite there yet. I mean, I, I think you've got to look up and see a few more runs on the board to get comfortable enough to do it. The key right now for Sugar is he, he he's been very efficient. I mean, he's Right between 11 or 12 pitches in any. We used to have a, a spot on the chart 
and we could we kept track of 13 pitch innings so if it was 13 pitches or less that was a huge positive and he's been pretty pretty consistent doing that tonight for the five innings that Sugar has had he's thrown 13 or less the only that he hasn't he threw 14 got help from a double play in the fourth part of an eight pitch inning well the other aspect of that obviously is the trust that you have in your bullpen and not only to be effective but also to cover some innings. Upstairs to Tate Shaw who has scored two runs. He has singled and walked. And he draws his second walk of the game. Here's Jake McKenzie. He is one for two. Yeah. Line to center. Off the logo. Two on with one out. And that'll take us back to the top of the order in the speedy David Hamilton. Look out now. <clears throat> Excuse me, McKenzie swinging a bat like he has tonight out of the nine hole. That lengthens this Longhorns lineup pretty significantly. Single back in the second. Single in the fifth. Bottom half of this order has been on base seven of nine times in the seven, eight, nine slot tonight. Two on for Hamilton. Earlier tonight he picked up his 29th stolen base of the season. Buster only had a great article on ESPN.com this week. And it was essentially that with the demise of the bunt and the stolen base and the hit and run at the major league level, managers don't have anything to do anymore. They post a lineup. They rarely call pitch outs. Yeah. They rarely call for a stolen base. I, I, I read that. And I think in game, I think he's right. Um, but I still think that the most important role of a manager or a head coach is more the mental side mm -hmm. um, of, of making sure you're talking to all 25 guys and that all 25 guys are right. No one when you need to go to somebody and when you need to stay away knowing when you need to look somebody in the eye and, and challenge them or when you got to go up and put your armor on that's the role that a head coach or a manager is always going to have to fill regardless of what analytics plays during the course of the game well you just look as far as the recent major league hires to understand yes. why communication is now at the forefront yes absolutely Alex Cora Aaron Boone great communicators and with organizations that are definitely going to fall into that category that Buster was referring to. Cool moment too. Alex Cora got his World Series ring this weekend. How cool is that? Bench coach last year for the Astros, now the manager for the Red Sox. To the right side. To second for one. Oh, didn't get a foot down. Everybody safe as McKenzie came on and the ball came out of the glove of Trailer LeBlanc. LeBlanc. And Hamilton is on for the third time. When Encio Luca is the second baseman, and, and on this one, all you're trying to do is make sure that you get one out, but it's the throw that takes Trey LeBlanc right into the path of Jake McKenzie, the base runner. You know the slide's coming. So you know there's a chance you're going to get taken out. Probably one there, even with the speed of Hamilton. The baseball's taking you towards first base. You want to make sure you get one out right there. Texas Southern not able to get anybody out. Now you're facing the hardest Texas lineup with the bases loaded. Oh. 
East six. 15th of the season for LeBlanc. That's a tough E6. Throw takes you to the other side of the bag and you get a base runner getting on you. Moorhead State holding on against Clemson. Two to one, the top of the six. Clemson second in the country in home runs. Moorhead State's top five. That's a battle of two clubs that can put runs on the board in a hurry. Seth Beers hit one tonight for Clemson. Chase the breaking ball. There's a big out, two down now. Big out and a big strikeout right there, too, because when bases loaded one out, you're trying to keep that ball from being put in play. It's a big strikeout for Mason Furlong. Now you get this guy. Big 12 player of the year, 19 home runs on the year for Cody Clemens, 0 for 3 so far tonight. Furlong trying to be careful. Two grand slams in the season for Clemens. You heard David Pierce talk about his pitching plan for Chase Sugar. Not comfortable taking him out with a 6 nothing lead. One big swing could change that. It could help Texas preserve one of its key arms for the weekend. Little flare in the shallow center. Dukes was playing deep. It drops in front of him and almost over his head. Two runs have scored. On a bloop single for Cody Clemens. He'll take it. Absolutely. Plates two more. Cody Clemens now 20 RBIs hitting with the bases loaded this year. Fastball looked like it got in on his hands a little bit. You can see the action out in center field too. Cameron Dukes, you got to play deep because of the power that Clemens has, but with the size of that swing. You expect that that ball is going to travel a little bit more. Sometimes the sound will tip it off to where you know it doesn't get all barrel and you can break in. But Dukes had to wait for a few counts right there just to make sure that ball wasn't going to get over his head. Ends up dropping in front. Texas adds two more. Runners at first and third for Zach Zubia. Careful here. This guy can hit it to the tennis courts. It's been eight years since Texas had teammates with double digit home runs. That year they had three of them, including Cameron Rupp. Talking with David Pierce early in the season and referencing Zach Zubia's power, called it ridiculous. But he just needs to learn to lay off some of the borderline pitches. And two home runs in one game earlier this season at Alec Box Stadium against LSU. It's like tower power, and everywhere the Zubia goes, he's got the best raw power on the club. That includes the Northwoods League. What he hit like 27? 20, 22 was a record for home runs in one season. Well, probably sent a few woodchucks scrambling, I think. <laughs> Everybody off and running. Throw Holmes late. Nothing at second. And Texas steals one from Mason Furlong at TSU. Speed doesn't slump. And Hamilton has the best speed in the entire field. 
So you can do some things at third base when you're facing a left-hander that you can't against a right-hander because he can't see you. So watch the movement of Hamilton right there. Before anybody knows what's going on, Hamilton has home base stolen. You're not going to do that against a right-hander. The rider's going to see it. You're going to run right in his face. He can step off. There's a lot better chance he can throw you out. But against the lefty, that's a total field play, and Hamilton's on his own. If he gets the jump he wants, he's off. He took three or four steps before Mason Furlong knew what was going on on the mound. Now, remember, earlier in this at bat, Furlong threw over to try to pick off Cody yes. Clemens or keep him close, and Clemens only has four stolen bases on the season. So Cody, acting as the decoy there, bought Hamilton some time. still one of the most exciting plays in baseball when a guy can steal home you just don't see it very much full count So 30 stolen bases now for Hamilton. Two on for Mason Hibbler. Hibbler can play just about anywhere. He's in left field now. Hey, Julian, Tony. At some point this series, we're going to see one of Mason's junior college teammates. Pitch is in there for a strike. It's a uh, junior reliever Mateo Boki. They were both at Odessa Junior College. And the reason Boki is here is when Hibbler showed up, the coaching staff said, hey, 